George in Silmar, California. Hey, George, thanks for listening to KPFK. It says you want to correct something I said. What's up? Yes, sir. With respect, honest, you're, thank you very much for your time on the radio. When you discussed the issue of Ab Elliot Abrams, you said you misspoke twice. Once you said guerrillas perpetrated the massacre at El Mazo. Oh, no, it was the it was, it was, it was death squads. Yeah, it was no. the death squads. It was the Salvadoran no, military. It was the, I believe, it was the Atlacado Battalion. As I waited on the phone, I tried to find my notes, mm. but they were regular soldiers, troopers, right. Right. American right. weapons, American mm. ammunition, American helicopters, and the reporters who took the photos and tried to report on it were blocked by the American media. When I tried to get in there, I was stopped by Honduran soldiers and two different militia checkpoints. Elliot Abrams stopped the report reportage on an atrocity perpetrated on government supporters by government soldiers. That's how bad it actually was. Yeah. I, so, you know, George, your, 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 your narrative completely... Uh, is completely consistent with my my memory of this, and I hadn't looked it up. I was just going off this uh, uh, rant Abrams by Wa is Walter Einkel. I'm sorry. Elliot Abrams is a criminal. Everyone yeah. involved is a criminal. He's a convicted All the war way criminal. To the offices in San Salvador. Everyone. Yeah, he's a convicted war criminal, and George Bush is putting him in charge of our Venezuela policy. And I'm convinced. Uh, I don't know if you saw yesterday, if you saw the reporting on this, but uh, Mike Pompeo, our Secretary of State went into this uh, uh, briefing with the press with a legal pad under his arm. And on the top of the legal pad, in his own handwriting, was a note, 5,000 troops to Colombia. Now, why would we send 5,000 troops to Colombia? Colombia has a new president. He's kind of on our side. He's not asking for help. Well, if you want to invade Venezuela, Colombia is right next door. It's a great staging point. So repositioning. Yeah. Thank you, sir, and I'll get off the line. Thanks the thanks a lot, George. I appreciate the call, and thanks for listening to KPFK, and thanks for keeping me honest here. Um, you know, this is this is just so clear. Chris in Baltimore, Maryland. Hey, Chris, thanks for watching us on YouTube. What's up? Hi. I just want to comment about uh, the Nader Gore yeah. Bush debacle in Florida. Everybody keeps saying that it's Nader's fault. but Oh, I don't think it's Nader's numbers, fault. I, you know, I Jeb Bush suppressed the vote of more African Americans than Ralph Nader got the votes of. Right. Also, what I've heard, the number is somewhere between 200 and 300,000 registered Democrats in Florida voted for Bush. Yeah, well, that's, so that's, that's normal. More than the, and first of all, to get into the argument that somehow I owe my vote to the Democrats, you know, my vote doesn't belong to Al Gore or Joe Lieberman or Hillary Clinton. That's all true, Chris, but the flip side of that is that you have to live with the consequences of your vote. I mean, if you voted for Jill Stein and you got and you got uh, Donald Trump, that's on you. No. Yeah. The person who gave us Donald Trump was the Hillary Clinton and DNC rigging the primaries. Well, and that's why we have Trump. I, Not because people voted for Stein. You know, I, people I, with I, I can't completely disagree with you, Chris, although I'd say that the blame for that goes way beyond just Hillary Clinton and the DNC, the media loved Donald Trump, and they gave him $2 billion worth of free airtime. And so, you know, the, the, the spectrum of people that we could blame for Trump is a little larger than that. But I get your point. Chris, thanks for the call. We'll be right back.